Hi, this is Dalton with GeoMarvel, and today we'll be exploring the new features and functionality within ArcGIS Enterprise 11.0. So I've added a few sample data layers here in the state of Wisconsin, some trout habitat points lines, and DNR managed land parcels. First, working with our points layer, I want to show the new effects capabilities within the web map viewer. So clicking on our layer in question, we can click the effects button. And now we can see a variety of out of the box effects that we can apply to our points layer. We have bloom here, which we can adjust the strength, radius and threshold of the bloom effect. And you can see how toggling these dials up and down, we can get some vast differences in how this single effect can be applied. We also have the drop shadow effect. We can choose the color here, the width, and the offset and opacity settings for this particular effect. And we have the blur effect. Pretty simple inputs here. We can determine how much blur we want on the point layer symbology. There's also brightness and contrast. So here you can see we go from a dark purple to a white and vice versa with these two toggles. And grayscale is our next effect out of the box, which at any point we can click that reset to default and reset our symbology. Additionally, we have hue rotation as well that can be explored with your point symbology. And here we have saturate, so we can saturate the amount of color. And here we have the ability to invert our color scheme. So we can go from dark to light or vice versa. And then we have the sepia tone filter as well to explore. Now those were whole layer effects. We also have feature specific effects where we can uh, identify a particular field that we're interested in and then set a condition in this example, object ID is greater than 437. And you can see now how with this expression in place, we can start to change the symbology effects to see how they change the symbology of the layer dynamically. And each of these offer a different approach, whether you are combining drop shadow and gray or the drop shadow and blur. We also have bloom and transparency. So a lot of out of the box functionality here that really lets you start to explore and pinpoint to symbolize the data that you see as most important. So next we wanna look at configuring pop-ups, which if you're not already familiar with it, there is this dynamic pop-up configuration interface that allows you to build and see the results of your pop-up configuration in real time, which is definitely some very helpful functionality for those of you who build out your pop-ups like we do. And here you can see there is now the out of the box chart configuration within the pop-up builder. So we've got the three different chart types that we can incorporate. And here let's throw some field values at it that are gonna populate that chart for us. And you can see how we can, rather than embedding charts from external sources, we can build them dynamically directly in here by reading from our data source. So we've got pie charts, line charts, and bar charts. You can see how those will be helpful to start embedding directly into your pop-up. And again, you have the standard functionality of the field lists, the title, the charts, images, text, and even arcade expressions. So we can still out of the box, add, remove fields from this display and pop up configuration as we see fit. And we also want to showcase the sketch functionality here, which is definitely a dynamic and, and powerful functionality to add additional elements and information to your map. So in this instance, we have a fish centric map for trout in Wisconsin. And we have a simple out of the box fish symbol here that we can go ahead and draw right on a new sketch layer on top of our map. And you can see a lot of out of the box options with the animal symbols, for example, here, which we can continue to place on our map. And beyond points, we also have the ability to draw and sketch lines on top of our map. So these will be added to that same sketch layer that has been added with optional snapping enabled as well. And there's some out of the box colors that we can choose as well as a custom color. We can also adjust the transparency and line thickness for these lines. 
And here you're seeing the polygon sketch functionality as well, whether that's a manually drawn polygon or here we can do a box or a circle, for instance. And we can adjust the colors here and we can also drop text right into our sketch layer on top of our map by simply dragging and dropping and then changing the value of that text. So in this instance, we could say rare event. Let's assume there's a, a rare trout event going on in this location that we want to highlight. We can change the color of that text box. We can add a halo. We can change the size and the font. And then with the arrow tool, we can then be changing and selecting our sketch layer points, lines, and polygons and text boxes on the map. And you can see circling back here, we've got our snapping functionality that we can enable snapping from our sketch drawings to layers that are currently in the map. So for instance, we are drawing lines between our existing trout points in our map. And you can see how that does indeed snap to those points as we're drawing that line, which makes it a very convenient tool to kind of add to your data. And then you can see the sketch layer is now a standalone layer with all my points, lines, polygons, and text all contained in a single layer here, which makes it easy to toggle on and off. And then clicking back on a different layer, we get our standard properties on the right. And now let's continue by showcasing a few of the effects abilities for points, lines, and polygons in our map. So we can do feature specific effects here. So we can choose a water body name, object ID, for example, uh, and we can then determine object ID greater than a specific number and we can symbolize our data accordingly. We also have these bloom and transparency, bloom and blur, bloom and gray, or muted blur, all these different out of the box feature specific options that'll let us interact with our data even further. And now if we go over to the lines, Let's just adjust our symbology on these lines a little bit to make them a little clearer. So we go to style, let's go style options, simple style and stroke. We can just increase that size a little bit. And now jumping back to the effects, let's see what uh, different effects have on this line style. So we have the bloom effect, which then has strength, radius, and threshold, each of which can be kind of moved along the scale to change the visualization of the data. And if we then test out our polygon layer, let's try a different effect here, such as drop shadow. So again, here we can choose our drop shadow color, we can change the width and opacity of that and see what kind of effects that has on our particular polygon layer. Now we can obviously add our sketching options to this map as well. So this will come through as a standalone sketch layer. So you can add these different symbols out of the box, such as the fish icon for our trout slayer. And we can also add some graphics on top as well and some polygons of themselves. So we can add the circles here. Let's say we're highlighting a few different target areas or areas of import significant importance for the species. And we can change the color and all the associated elements for these circles as well. And now let's take a look at the new ArcGIS dashboards. And it's important to note that ArcGIS Dashboards Classic will no longer be available in ArcGIS Enterprise 11.0 and beyond. Now let's create our dashboard by hitting that Create Dashboard button and go ahead and give it a title and let's create this dashboard. Now first and foremost, let's go ahead and add this map. We've created a demo map from our previous layers. So let's go ahead and add this and adjust some settings. So we'll want the default extent, legend, base map switcher, search, and the zoom in and out functionality. And here we can also give our map a title. So let's add that in here and adjust the settings a bit. And we can hit done here. So let's add another element here on the left hand side. 
and we can drop in a pie chart. So reading from our points, we can determine our category and our value field. And we can adjust these a little bit. Then we can determine our category and our statistic. And we can set our actions so that when we click a particular slice of the pie chart, we can determine what actions we want the dashboard to take. And now that we've configured the pie chart with our actions, you can see how we can select a particular slice of the pie and it will dynamically show or remove the point layer details from our right side panel. Adding another widget here, let's try out the table widget that's newly available in ArcGIS Enterprise 11.0. So with our table, we can configure a category field and then we can add additional value fields here to start populating out this table with appropriate details. And we have the size settings. We can adjust the row and column details, both color-wise and uh, line thickness. We can adjust the vertical and horizontal grid details as well. And just rolling through a couple of the other options, we can provide a summary, we can adjust the title, offer some last update text, and also tie this together with actions that tie into the rest of the dashboard. So let's hit done here and take a look at our table. So now you can see we're scrolling through based on the, the fields and the data sets that we added. And we can dynamically pick rows from our table, in this instance, multiple rows, and see how that impacts our data in the map to the right. And continuing forward with the new interface, we can look at this layout view, which gives us the rows and columns of the dashboard, as well as this quick button to add a header. So we can add our typical header details here as well as a sidebar. So a little bit of a different interface here to interact with where we can offer a collapsible sidebar here and then we can add additional elements into this sidebar. So for example, we can do category number or date selectors. And the date selector configuration gives you a variety of options here as well. So we can give some defined options of defined and known dates, or we can offer a date picker here, which we can offer a single date or a range of dates, and we can view this in a calendar format as well. Now we have that quick date selector in our collapsible sidebar. And we can obviously add additional selectors here, such as a category selector. If we wanted to read from features, let's say the trout lines, then we can dynamically add our field names and details to the line template and see real time how that would be displayed on the right side here. And perhaps on, upon click, we want that to zoom to these layers. Can save our dashboard and then see how the slide over panel works with the dashboard interactions as well. And we also have our standard out of the box theme options, whether we choose light or dark mode or custom colors for a variety of options here. And in our settings, we can also enable the ability for users to resize elements. And here we have that direct URL parameter input as well. So we can start building our own URL parameters to control some additional dashboard functionality. So in the member roles, we have a few new options within the role creation and abilities. So let's create a new role. Let's just set this from an existing role. We can use the data curator template here and import those settings. And one of the new items to highlight here is under the content dropdown and right toward the bottom there, we can see the ability to reassign content and receive content. 
So these two will enable users to change ownership of content, assuming that they have the ability to reassign their content and are reassigning it to someone who has that ability to receive content. And here we're adding a new file to our ArcGIS Enterprise deployment. You can see there's a variety of file types that are built in here out of the box that can be added. And we're going to go with a standard shape file and go with the option to create a hosted feature layer along with this zip file upload. So here we can give it a name and hit save. So that will upload our layer from our zipped shapefile and create a hosted feature layer at the same time. Another item I want to showcase is the view layer creation process. So from a hosted feature layer here, we have that create view layer button directly on the overview page. And from here, we would select our layer. So we can select our DNR managed land parcels layer. And then this is where we can add our definitions. So we're going to add a filter using an expression here. So if I want the particular field to be at least, let's say, in the 80,000s. And on top of that, I can select an additional field, let's say deed acres and set that to also be at least a particular value. So I can kind of cross-reference two different expressions in the view layer creation process to really pinpoint only the data I am interested in. So we'll go back, we have that filter applied. We could optionally add an area of interest and we can optionally choose which fields to retain or remove from this view layer. So the resulting view layer can be limited to just what we want our end users to see. And then we can give this a name out of the box. It'll add view to our original feature layer name, and then we can create it. And once we get that view layer created success message, it will automatically take us over to that new hosted view layer, which you can see right there in the overview description of this layer. And when we go ahead and visualize, we can already see that our filters are being retained and respected and showcased here in the visualization tab. So if we go ahead and just do a side-by-side -side comparison here, I'll go ahead and add the original layer and the view layer. So our original land parcels and the land parcels view. So let's go ahead and change the symbology a little bit here just so we can differentiate the two layers. So I will take fill away. So we just have our hollow polygons. Okay, and let's also add our newly created view layer, just for a little visual confirmation on our filters. So as we zoom in and pan around here, you can see that the yellow polygons are from our view layer and the hollow ones are from the original layer. So the original showcasing the full data set and our view layer showcasing based on those filters that we set in that expression. So pretty quick and easy to create some hosted view layers of your ArcGIS Enterprise data. Another item we want to showcase here is the fact that ArcGIS Solutions is now available directly from the App Launcher as an already deployed configuration with ArcGIS Enterprise 11.0. So here you can see we have our solutions and solution templates out of the box and, and ready to start exploring without any additional setup needs. So here we just simply find our solution, click the Deploy Now button, and that solution is immediately deployed into our ArcGIS Enterprise environment. So looking at this flood impact analysis solution, you can see that it'll list the solution contents here. In this instance, we're looking at a ArcGIS Pro desktop application template. And let's jump over and check out another solution. So we can explore through our available solution templates. And let's say we're interested in the agricultural best practices. We can kind of browse through what the images have to offer can read more about it and we can ultimately click that deploy now button to deploy the solution into our enterprise. And that solution has been successfully deployed. 
So we can click and open our solution, which is now an item within our Arctus Enterprise. And you can see the solution contents from here. So this one has a bit more showing a few different dashboards, web maps, and server 123 forms and feature layers out of the box. So when we go view this dashboard, you can see the pre-configured template and what it's really missing is just the underlying data. So as we would start populating that data in our survey forms and our feature layers, that would auto fill in through the web map and the dashboard that we're seeing here. Okay, and back to the home page. The final item I want to take a look at here is the Deep Learning Studio. So we will certainly create a more in-depth overview of this product as well, but just wanted to kind of show from a high level what the Deep Learning Studio is and what we can do with it. So first off, we're creating a project and you can see our project type varies from three different options. We have object detection, we have pixel detection, and object classification. So these are all imagery based analysis that are going to use deep learning to detect objects, to classify pixels, let's say like land cover types, if we have different color pixels uh, from a satellite imagery, we can train the data model and allow the deep learning process to classify our pixels for us. And same with objects as well. Identifying and training the data to know what a pool looks like and then inputting a variety of additional images where it can then detect those objects automatically. So this has been a quick overview of the new features and enhancements that are available within ArcGIS Enterprise 11.0. We hope you enjoyed this video and would love to hear back on any questions or feedback that you have regarding ArcGIS Enterprise 11.0 and let us know what you think.